Good morning, it's me. I'm back. I'm Stephanie Flath, Stampin' Up! Demonstrator. And I'm coming to you live on Wednesday morning, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. It is the 16th of November already. Can you believe it? Um, so you can find me every Wednesday here at 10.30. Um, or you can find me on my website at dazzledbystamping.com. So by the way, here is Facebook, um, and that my business page is facebook.com slash dazzled by stamping. So I'm happy to be here, and um, let me know when you get on. I can see somebody is starting to get on. Um, I'm going to refresh my screen a sec so I can see comments um, when you um, tell me you're here, or you ask me questions, or whatever it is that you got. Um, all right, just a second here. I don't see them yet. Okay, I think it's coming up. Hi, Kathy. Um, so I, I'm just going to chat for a little bit. We had on stage in Indianapolis last week and, oh, hi, Dot. Are you leaving already? <laughs> or see you later. I don't know what you mean by see you later. I'll see you Monday. Not today, as far as I know. Um, hi, Terry. So we had um, on stage in Indianapolis. It was a training time. And it was a wonderful time. Um, I didn't realize until I started blogging last week for um, for um, to schedule while I was going to be gone um, that I haven't seen some of these people in three years. We haven't had an in-person event other than, well, like we had, hi, Carrie, we had backstage, but that's for a certain title and above. Um, that was in August. That was the first in-person event. Hi, Marlene. And, um, but on stage for everybody, we haven't had it in three years. So it was so exciting to see people. It was so much fun. Um, I got to meet my co-demo council from 2020 um, for the first time. Well, Julia was um, a co-demo council member and she was my roommate in New Orleans. Um, but... I got to meet two more people this weekend. It was wonderful. So, um, and we had a great shoebox swap. Eventually, I'll be sharing those. I took pictures of those yesterday. Oh, and I have to show you. Okay, so, um, so on stage is for everybody. And there's something called center stage the night before. Hi, Marsha. That is just for a certain title and above. And um, I just say that because... If you're not demonstrators, you don't know the, how the titles go necessarily. So I don't bother telling you titles. Um, so we get we got a special um, dessert time, and we got a special gift, and we got our catalogs sooner. Um, so our special gift was um, an umbrella, and I want to pop it open because it's amazing. Okay, so first, I'm always about logo stuff. That Oops, I got to get it in camera. Just a sec. Going the wrong way. Okay, here we go. We're <laughs> in camera here. So, um, we got the umbrella with the Stampin' Up! logo on it, which is amazing. But look what you get to see inside on a, on a, um, on a cloudy, rainy day. Just a sec. I got to see if I can fit it in here. I can't fit it. Just a sec. It's not working because my big old chair. Hmm. I'm going to get my big old chair out of the way. Ah, look at that. Okay, come back this way. It's all our gorgeous colors and it looks like designer paper. I seriously, I touched it like I thought there was going to be texture. I thought there was going to be pieces. I love it. How about that for a rainy day? That's amazing. I didn't count, but I'm assuming that there's our <clears throat> 40, what is it? 10 times four. So our 40 core colors. I'm, I can't tell if there's any, 
I think our, our, um, our, what do you call it? Our in colors are here too. So that would be 60 colors. I'm gonna have to count later. Yeah, I can see this is probably evening evergreen. Um, yeah, anyway, I love this. So much fun. Okay, so I gotta pop it again. I just wanted to show you because it's amazing inside. I mean, it's cool enough that it's logo, um, but even cooler that they made the inside. Like, you know how on a sunny day it's so dreary and whatever, it, I mean, sunny day, on a, on a rainy day, it's so dreary and whatever. And, um, and that is just amazing. I love it. Okay, so I had to show you that. Okay, so... It was a fun idea. I was, at first I was like, oh, umbrella. Okay, that's fine. And then I opened it. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, it's always nice to get gifts, but I'm not necessarily about the gifts, even though I had to make sure I was there to get mine. You know, FOMO. Fear of missing out, if you don't know what that is. Um, okay, so I have my randomizer loaded. And for those of you who may be new to me, my randomizer is where I drop all the names of people that um, shared my video last week and told me that they were sharing. Because you got to come back and post um, on my, sorry, really itchy nose this morning, post on my, um, the... Facebook post that has my original video. You got to tell me that you shared because I don't always see it. I can't always see it. Oh, Jamie Rose, you're my first winner. I have two from last week. All I remember, oh yeah, I used the um, Leaves of Holly because that's going to be my, my, um, the stamp set that I'm using for my next Dazzling Card Club, which is December 6th. Okay, so congrats, Jamie. And I need to choose another one. Pick another name. Start. <clears throat> Dot Allegary. Didn't you both win last week, too? Holy smokes. All right. You got another one. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, girls. I appreciate it. And congratulations. And eventually I will get those to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so today what I'm doing is um, I actually have three projects. Hopefully I'm not too Gabby and can actually get through them. <laughs> um, so today I'm focusing on two things. One is what I would call masking. Um or let's see. Yeah, definitely masking cuz I'm um uh I'm only inking a part of my Hi Jamie. I was so glad to see you this weekend. Um I was Oh, I'm inking up only part of my stamp. Both of the both of these masking that I'm doing is um the second one's probably not masking, but it's um, using markers on my stamps. So um, so the first project that I'm going to do, I'm, I'm starting with chocolate. <laughs> um, the first project that I'm going to do is um, what I would call a little milk carton. Um, and I'm actually going to show you how I cut and score it. Um, it's intended for, like I designed this around two lint chocolate balls. So um, if you win this, you're going to have to come get it. I'm not mailing it. So just keep that in mind. So to start out with, I'm going to, I'm going to be using um, designer paper from texture, texture chic um, designer paper. So I'm going to show you up here first. Um, so this is a summary one. I'm not using summary right now. Here's the back and a flowery one. I've used these 
actually probably a month or two ago. Here's this. Um, I made four cards for four different seasons. Um, I don't know if you remember that. Um, but here they are. Hi, Debbie. <clears throat> I know you'll drive for chocolate, Marsha. <laughs> and you didn't win this week, so it's very likely you'll win next week. <laughs> um, so there's those. And then here's the back of the last one. So the colors in this designer paper is Evening Evergreen, Mango Melody, Petal Pink, Pool Party, Soft Succulent, Soft Suede. Okay. Hi, Nancy. I'm glad to see you. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to um, turn this down. I forgot to put my, my phone in here last night before I left, so I'm... I mean, not before I left. With this, with my new holder, um, I'm never sure how it is that I'm that I'm wanting it to be in here. So hopefully, I have it set right. So, um, all right. So I need to do my magic. I'm gonna unbackwards you, upside down you. At first, I'm just gonna tilt you, and then I need to. Oh. Need to do loosen this up so that I can drop you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Kathy, you you uh, you have the easiest, unless it's snowing or raining. <laughs> you have the easiest job if you win it. You just gotta remember to share. Oh, so that was the point of that. Share my video, um, and then come back and tell me that you did on on this post so then I can add you to my randomizer next week. Okay. Am I in here right? Yeah, I think so. I'm just, I have my, my computer screen just off so I can't see that I'm all on camera. Okay. So here's my designer paper that I'm using. Um, <laughs> thanks, Terry. <laughs> um, so I need my paper trimmer. <clears throat> so those of you who've been to club this month or actually even last you've seen this but I didn't show the the cutting of this and I didn't show this particular design so get this here a second okay so this is five and a half inches wide and five and a quarter inches long or vice versa I never know which one you say is wide or long so um just a sec, I need to move my screen again a little bit. A bunch of people are liking and sharing. I gotta just make sure I didn't miss something else. Okay, thank you. All right, so what we need for the Lynch chocolate balls is we need a one and a quarter inch, uh, a score line every one and a quarter inches. So, one and a quarter. So I do this. Um, I'll tell you, <laughs> I just thought you're really excited, Terry. It made me happy. <laughs> Hi, Jamie. Oh, you were a winner. I didn't know you were, weren't on yet. You were one of my winners again. So when I share my measurements on, um, on my blog for you, I will tell you one and a quarter, two and a half, that sort of thing. But so... Um, so I don't have to do the math all the time. Sometimes I'll just line up my, okay, so I scored it at one and a quarter. And then I take my score line to the next one and a quarter. Um, and score. And then I take that score line to the next one and a quarter. So then I don't have to worry so much about, like doing the math in my head or writing it down or I don't know, whatever. So then I'm scoring again at one and a quarter. So it leaves a half inch here for a little, <laughs> um, you're funny, Jerry. Um, leaves a half inch tab here for putting it together. So I want my bottom to be one inch. So I'm scoring there. By the way, I'm not pressing too hard because this is designer paper, not cardstock but I am going over it twice. Then I want my the body of it to be three inches. 
so I could line it up at four, but I was looking at the three. And then I want another three quarters of an inch score line there. Okay? So I'm not going to show you... Well, I guess I could do it quick on the back. I'm going to use... I'm going to use... Um, so you can see better. Let's use my marker. I was looking for a Sharpie, but this will work. Okay, so these are the score lines that I made. So one and a quarter, not very straight. Another one and a quarter, another one and a quarter, another one and a quarter. So these are score lines, not cut lines. Then one inch. four inches or three more inches and then another so that would be four and three quarter or another three quarters of an inch okay so this is what it looks like but I'm doing this side so now the next step for any sort of box or whatever like this is cutting on the score lines that are at the bottom um, because these make the box bottom, so the tabs. I'm cutting these into tabs. So I'm cutting on one score line to the next. So I'll show you on, on this. I'm cutting on these lines to this next one. And then this one, this little corner one, I'm actually cutting out. I don't need this, it just gets in the way. Same with this tiny one up here. Just taking this little corner out. Okay. So here's how we look on the back. Okay. So now the next job is to bad connection for me. I'm trying, but I'm trying to watch. Okay. Well, uh, hopefully you'll find it later. Hmm. Maybe it's the weather. Is it snowing again? I can't tell. Um, <clears throat> anybody else having a bad connection or is it just them? Because sometimes it could be me, but if it's just one person, then I can't worry about it. Okay, so now I'm scoring on all my lines that I just, or creasing on all my lines that I just scored. So I do these first. Then I do my bottom, my box bottom. Then I'm gonna do this one. It will help it go back. To, it'll help it to go better together better. And then this goes backwards, and you'll see why in a second. Did I tell you it was a mini milk carton? Okay, good. All right. So I finally learned when you're putting this together not to try to hold this up and try to get this together like this, the easiest way to make it so that it's, I'm not going to use liquid glue today. Um, oh, sorry. The, hi, Stephanie. I'm glad that you're here. Um, this paper is called Texture Chic Specialty Paper. It's in the full catalog, um, the annual catalog. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to, um, I'm not using liquid glue today. I did at club, I'm gonna use regular glue. Okay, so the easiest way to put the box together is just lay it flat. <clears throat> then you can close that flap and look, it's perfectly square. It's not all wonky. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> then I'm going to put adhesive on two tabs that are next to each other. So I'm going to close the bottom. So, oh, I forgot I don't want it that far out. Hmm. What can I put on there? It's not going to cover all that. I'm going to have to wipe it off or something. Um, okay, so I'm going to close that up and put it on top of the adhesive one and put this on top of the adhesive one. All right, I need to 
wipe some of this off. I wish we had the adhesive remover we used to have. I know we have it, or I have it, but <clears throat> I don't have it right here. All right, so I'm gonna use my bone folder to um, to close it, or to, to press it down. Just a sec, I need a drink. What I might do later <clears throat> is grab this same paper and put another piece this size on the bottom. Okay, so now I'm gonna tuck my my lint chocolate balls in here. So two fit in here perfectly because I measured it for this. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to tuck these two edges in and pinch. And then look, I have a cute little, it's a skinny one, but it's a cute little milk carton. Okay, so we got this and I'm not trying to put the adhesive together. It kind of stays together until oh, it relaxes. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside for the moment. Oh, I forgot to pull out just a second. I have, I bought a bunch of these. But I forgot to put one out for today. You saved some chocolates for today. <laughs> I did. <laughs> last night, my hostess was me, and I didn't fill my thing with chocolate last night. Okay, so I have this little, um, it's not a mini one, but it's a small one. It may even just say that on there, small. I don't know if there's a size. Um, but this is three quarters of an inch wide. So... I have this little piece of designer paper. This did not come from this pack of designer paper, but I knew it would coordinate. Um, so I used this little piece um, of, this is from the, the stack of designer papers. Um, so I'm going to put it on here. I sort of tuck it in the edge, wrap it, and tuck it in on that side. Oh it too long. All right, I'm going to undo it a second. I'm going to cut just a tiny little bit off. So this is like one inch and one, like a sixteenth of a line or something like that. The line that's at is one sixteenth. There we go. That fits under there better. Okay, then we pinch it open and put it on there. See, cute. I love it. I love coordination. Oh, Stampin' Up! is all about coordination. It makes me so happy. Okay, so now um, we have the cute little box made. Now I want to decorate it a little bit more. So I'm going to use, oops, where did I put my stamp set? I have the stamp, but I wanted to show you the set. Oh, here it is. Okay. So this stamp set is called Limited Edition. And in case you're unaware, um, if you sell cards or sell items that you've made with Stampin' Up! images, you're supposed to have the Stampin' Up! name on them. Um and many of these, one, two, three, four, five, six of these eight stamps have the Stampin' Up! name when you stamp it. Um, and you need that. It's a copyright. It's, Stampin' Up! calls it its angel policy. Um, but also these are intended for like the back of your cards. I'm horrible at doing that anymore, but if I'm selling them, I sure need to do it. Um, but anyway, I'm going to use this one, Handcrafted from the Heart this stamp set right here. This is in the full catalog, by the way, limited edition. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to color the little heart um, soft succulent and color the, from the heart. So this is what's called um, masking um, or omitting. That's probably the better term for it is omitting. I misspoke. 
Um, cause I'm omitting the rest of this. I'm in, omitting the Stampin' Up! name they handcrafted. Mostly because it won't fit on what I want to use it on. Whenever you use direct markers directly to your stamps, you need to, someone used the term, reactivate it. You need to breathe on it with hot air. <sighs> Another term is huffing, but sometimes that can cause problems in some circles. So, look how cute that is. Okay, so then I used, these are Stylish Shapes dies. They're stitched. They make me happy. Stitching always makes me happy. So they're square circles and then two different sets of banners. And I used the smallest one here for this. Isn't that so cute? All right, definitely need mini dimensionals on this one. We have regular dimensionals, mini dimensionals. Um, you can use the edges. Oops, I just peeled off the paper from that. And we also have, do you, you guys know we have black dimensionals? It comes, I think it's a pack of, I think it's $6. And it's a mixed pack. You get regular size and mini. Um... I never saw the need for black ones, but some people don't like being able to see a dimensional from underneath. Like if you look at the side, look at the card from the side, I, it, that doesn't bother me. Okay, so here it is. All right, and one last thing. <clears throat> I'm going to make a little bow. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do it uh, bunny ear style. So I'm making a tiny bow. So I need two loops. So I need the loops. I need my fingers to, this is probably, just a sec, I'm gonna look. Nine inches long. Um, two loops, you need it long enough for your hands to be able to deal with it. You need space in between here. Um, nine inches is probably pretty good. If you need it longer, great, um, that's fine. Or just start with it. Sorry, I'm doing it while I'm talking instead of telling you what I'm doing. Um, Whatever works for you. So I have my two loops. I guess maybe I'll get this out of the way so you can see on white. I can't twist my arms that way well enough. Okay, so I have my two loops and I'm gonna cross them. So they're crossed uh, one on top of the other. And can you see there's a, a another loop formed here now that I crossed them? One of those loops, doesn't matter, whichever works best for you, one of those ears, bunny ears, needs to come around and through that loop, and then you pull it. So then, I pull it not quite all the way, because then you might pull the, the ends through, and I just get it to the size that I want my bow to be. Since this is a tiny little package, kind of, I want somewhat of a tiny bow, so. This one isn't looking very, this little loop isn't looking very good. Just a second. Sometimes it looks better on the other side. Hmm. Either way, it's about the same. I do like that white side better, I guess. Okay, so I'm going to trim it. And then you could use a mini glue dot or I have liquid glue right here. I don't remember what I did with my mini glue dots at the moment. So I'm using liquid glue. So I'm just going to put a dot right here. So liquid glue, although I don't usually like to use it because I get it all over my fingers, drives me bananas. It actually is a really good glue. It's strong and... Um, you just have to hold it for a minute. I'm going to trim this a little bit more while I'm holding. And it's, it's strong. It's good for, um, it's good for holding boxes together, for holding, um, things on your project. So here's my, here's my little box, my little milk carton. That's it. 
Okay, so that is my first project using omitting. It was not, it was not masking, it was omitting. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna do is, oh, so I told you I was gonna be doing omitting. The other thing that I'm gonna be doing is using the Stamparatus. Um, so I'm sh sh featuring two things, omitting and Stamparatus. So what I want to do, the first thing I'm gonna do is, um, I'm actually gonna show you how I made my card that I made for my, for my shoe box. Um, thank you ladies. I made for my shoe box um, last weekend or this weekend. Where'd my adhesive go? Oh, it's underneath my thing here. Best thing to, to make this nice and level is a stamp case. That's like the perfect thickness for making it the right level to be able to ink this up well. Um, okay, so I'm going to be using, I found my mask. Did you guys hear that I lost it? I was the last one that used it. I couldn't find it. I said something at um, my team meeting, and Nadine said, did you check your Stamparatus? That's the what we used it with, and sure enough, it was right in there. Okay, so I just put a little bit of adhesive on here um, to sort of hold this in position a little bit because I'm going to put my mask down, and I actually want my magnets um, to hold my mask. So it doesn't move for me. Now I want my, I'm going to use my blending brush with Smoky Slate. And I'm going to ink it up a little bit, tap it off. And um, it keeps sliding. I don't know why it doesn't like the edge of that. There, that's good. Um... It, when I'm doing this, I can barely see that I'm adding any color to this. And I want it that way because of how the rest of my card looks. Um, hi, Dina. Um, and thanks for sharing. Um, okay, so we're going to go with this. I'm going to peek at it in a second and see, make sure that I can see color. Oh, that's really light. Holy cow. Too light. I, my, my blending brush wasn't saturated enough for it to do what I wanted it to do. Oh, I just lost my computer. There we go. Okay, this should be better. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I'm going to take this off so you can see. Can you even see it on the camera? Just a sec, I'll lift it up so you can. That's my favorite mask. Just a tiny little bit of like plaid looking or whatever. Okay, so when you use, so this is just, <clears throat> this is an extra use for the Stamparatus. I love using this with the magnets. They're really strong if you, uh, yeah, I know that is my intention. Um. They're really strong. If this is your first time ever seeing the Stamparatus, um, you need to keep in mind, because they're so strong, you need to make sure they're either on, um, on this, the front of the board, or uh, in their storage spots. Like if you're not using them and you put it away, they go right here. Um, oh, I'm missing a thing. Um, you don't ever put them on the table, even if they're like far away. Um, you don't want to put them on the table. They are really strong. And if they like crash together because they pull each other, um, pull themselves to each other, they are very brittle and could shatter. So keep that in mind. Okay, so um, the Stamparatus has, this is technically a positioning tool. Um, it's $49. There are two plates. It comes with two plates. I'm mostly just going to use one, but you stand them straight up and down and lift or put in. Once they're like this, they're locked into place. Um, the other one can go up here. So you can have four different surfaces that you can put 
stamps on that you're gonna do. Now, the, the magnets are typically for holding your cardstock in place because the idea behind this is I can ink up my image and I forgot to pull, pull the stamp set. Mm. If, just a sec. I forgot to, oh, and I just dropped it. At least that probably was it. Okay, so I need, oh, I, I didn't drop it. Okay, so this is the stamp set that I used. It's called Olive Branch. Um, and a quick mention, this is in the full catalog. And we have a seasonal sale going on right now. Um, all stamp sets. Well, stamp sets, I think, are 15% off. I think. Um, I don't have my list here. Punches are 10% off. Dies are 20% off. And fold embossing folders, are, are they 20% off also? Um, anyway... It's only in the annual catalog, though, the full catalog, and this is in there. So you could get this for 15% off right now. Keep in mind also, if you're buying a bundle in the full catalog right now because of, um, well, unless it's a bundle with a punch. No, even if it's a bundle with a punch. Because this is 15% off, and punches are 10% off, you're better off not using the bundle price, but using, I forgot to email people last night. Don't use the bundle price because the stamp set itself is 15 and the punch is 10. So then you're you're getting more than just 10% off of the book, which is what a bundle price is. Um, anyway, Olive Branch. This set attracted my, caught my attention when the catalog first came out. And this is the first time I've used it. So <clears throat> you use the um, magnets to hold this down. And I'm actually going to use markers. Yes, buy separately. Dina, did you see I sent a code to you guys? Uh for club that will be restarting. Okay, am I on camera? I'm about to be, I'm gonna turn this. I feel the need to turn this to get better coloring. Okay, so I'm using Old Olive on, on all of my actual branches. Hopefully I don't take too long to do this. Um, so I want I looked up olive branches, um, pictures of it in um, online, and obviously because there are some green olives, and at some point, olives aren't completely, um, what's the word? I can't color and talk at the same time. Well, there's a point where not everything's ripe. That was what I was wanting to say. So there is such a thing as making the olives and the branches all um, green. That is a real thing. Sometimes you don't always have to do things realistically, but this stamp set seems like you would want to do realistic colors. But anyway, so that is a thing that you could do, but that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted my, my olives to be colored. So I'm only coloring the branches here, the greenery, with old olive. And the stem sort of goes up into the olive. So does everybody remember what, once I'm all done coloring this, what I'm going to have to do before I stamp it? You guys are probably pros, so you know. Do you even know what I'm asking? What's the step that I have to do before I stamp this? Okay, I think I have all the green colored. Yes, I have to huff it. Good job being quick, Dina. Okay, now I'm using Blackberry Bliss Marker for my olives. I'm not sure that this is truly the color, but I thought that it would be the most interesting color that was close. So 
and now I'm coloring the olives. Oh, I forgot to show you this step. Um, so when you start with the Stamparatus, you need to decide where your stamp needs to be on this plate. Um, and I was going to show you that, and then I got distracted by showing you the stamp set itself. I was about to do it, and then I stopped myself. I interrupt myself all the time. Okay. I can't show you now because I already have it inked. I'll show you with a different stamp set. Okay, so, <clears throat> first different stamp. Okay, so we're going to pretend that this is my olive branches. So... Before you ink anything up to get started with your Stamparatus, you decide where on your piece of cardstock that you um, want your stamp to be. So this is a snowflake I'm gonna be using later. So this is where I want my olive branch to be. I already have it planned over here. Um, so I'm gonna flip it around so you see what I'm trying to do. Okay, so I have it placed where I want it to be. Um, I have this in place where I want it to be, and I'm always going to line up, like if I'm doing multiple projects, I'm always going to line up in this same spot. So I'm using, you can line up anywhere on here. Farther away from this edge is better. That's a good tip because if the closer you are to this, the harder it is to get a good stamped image. Um, I always like to line up with the Stampin' Up! name that's right here in this square behind my thing. Um, so I have my stamp down, and I press my plate down and pick it up. So now it's on on my plate exactly where I want it to be to go on here, okay? So that's what I did. <clears throat> that's what I did to place this um, these olive branches here. Okay. Now I have it inked, now I need to breathe on it. And I'm gonna make a mistake on purpose to show you how amazing the Stamparatus is. I'm gonna not press well on everything. So just a second. All right, so I'm gonna press it down. Ooh, that was not very good at all. All right, first of all, part of it might be that I didn't breathe on it enough, but look, I didn't get that one very well. That's the amazing thing about the Stamparetta. So I'm gonna breathe it again, and I'm gonna press it better this time. So just a sec. I think I talked too long after inking it up. Oh, I had a good tip that we were told um, at on stage. <clears throat> I don't have one, but I will show you with a block. I guess I wouldn't even need to use a block. Um, so some of you might not have strong hands to be able to press this down well or get the right spot, either on this or like if you're using a big background stamp. Um, she suggested who we saw using an eraser like from the dollar store or something and just using it like this so you're getting getting pressure over there everything i'm just using my this is a f h block <clears throat> i didn't mean to say f i knew it was not f okay so let's see how it is now oh look yay much better and i'm okay with it looking splotchy that can be like that but if you're not okay with that you could ink this up more because I'm not sure breathing on it anymore would, would do anymore. <clears throat> but you could ink this up more just like you did and re-stamp it and get it darker. Okay? So I'm done with the Stamparatus now. And I'm twisting this off. Remember I put a little piece of adhesive here? Twist it instead of trying to lift it. It will help you so that you don't rip your cardstock or whatever. Okay, I'm done with that for the moment. <clears throat> this side needs to drink again. <clears throat> All right, now I'm using the 
the stamp says, may your heart begin to heal. This says black stays on, by the way. Ah, so I love it. Okay. Now, last thing before I put this on my card. This is just a card front. Um, and I'm putting it on my card base. So this is gray granite shimmery ribbon. So I'm just going to make a knot. I did left over right, now I'm doing right over left. I always point them away from me, my ends away from me, and then tuck the top one under. Then when I'm trying to square it out, I'll hold on to one end and pull the other end. So then my knot gets square. And then you can make a tool from a curtain rod end and a furniture pad. They also sell on Etsy. The top forms around your hand easily and it's comfortable to use. I don't understand that. What it... What kind of, t what are we trying to accomplish with this tool? Because I can't picture it, Terry. Sorry. <clears throat> <clears throat> I like the dollar store idea or using the block that I already have, if that's what you're talking about, if it's for that. Okay, so here is my card front, and where is my card base? Here it is. Okay, so I used, um, I'm just using a white card base. Um, it's actually thick cardstock. Um, and then I just need some dimensionals to pop it up. And I'm almost done. Oh, one more. Seems kind of blank in the middle. Another good idea. Thanks, Terry. I have both things for your arthritic hands. Curtain rod end and a furniture pad. It's for that. It makes it easy. All right. I, for some reason, cannot at all picture what that is. But Jamie seemed to appreciate it. So thank you, Terry. <laughs> I have no clue. I cannot picture what in the world you're talking about. Uh, okay. So here's my card, and one last step. I think I want this down more. I purposely didn't put lots of plaid down here, um, but I want my ribbon down there, so it looks lovely. Okay, so I'm using these um, gems, adhesive-backed sequins and gems. They are on the same page, I think, as the Joyful Flurry. At least that's what I keep using it with, so I'm not sure. Um, and I'm using these, um, like, they're not triangles, but they're sort of, are they trapezoids? I don't know. Anyway, these gems. So I'm going to use my take your pick tool. These are a little bit harder to lift up. I'm just going to put it right on there. And it's done. Ta-da. This is my shoebox box. Okay, I believe I've heard of this before. It would be great for me as I have trouble. I don't want someone else to do it because I need to be able to do it alone. Right. Okay. Last thing that I'm doing. Oh, is with the Stamparatus again. Okay. So I need... This is my favorite... My favorite um, way to show the Stamparatus. First of all, I need to make sure this is clean because I don't think that it is. Um, Simply Shammy always ends up looking like this because it stains immediately when you first use it. But it's perfect for cleaning your stamps when you're using the Stamparatus. So... Um, I need this piece right here. Okay, so I'm going to put, do I want it here? Yeah, I'm going to do here. 
All right, so I'm gonna hold my cardstock right here. And so this, I'm gonna start out my, um, so this is what I should have done earlier. I'm gonna start out my stamp here um, on my cardstock. And I'm going to pick it up and then I'm gonna ink it up. So I'm gonna show you so we had done this card at my um, last Dazzling Card Club where we did the let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. And this is a smaller thing. And as you know, I'm God blessed me with being able to eyeball well. And so I just did this myself. But I want to show you how I can use your, your stamp apparatus to do it. Maybe not in such a small area or it would be more spaced but I'm gonna show you, it's called hinge step stamping or something like that. So, I'm gonna put this under here again. All right, so I'm going to, um, I'm going to ink up my Let It Snow and I'm going to stamp it. And then I'm gonna tip it up and move it down a notch. See how there's notches here? This is hinge, these are the hinge, this is the hinge right here. And I'm going to ink it up again, because I moved it down one, and I'm gonna stamp it. And now, so that's kind of far away. So now, let's see, I want, before I, before I move this, I want to clean it again. So you could actually go all the way down this cardstock and do let it snow. And then I just want three let it snows, so I'm not going to fill in too much here. I'm going to put it down one last time. So I lifted it off my plate this time and I picked it up and I'm going to ink it up again. Do let it snow. There. Ooh, that one's not such a great. I pressed it too hard. Okay. So here's my piece. So this actually works with um, um this works with the stylus shapes. This one, the second one. No, I guess it's the third one. Whoops. See how strong it is? It will fit around here. So you could do let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Which, by the way, I am not suggesting that it should do that. I'm just saying I like that saying. I like that it's very Christmassy because there's a song, that sort of thing. So it will fit in there. So I'm doing a it a little bit differently. Um... I'm just going to, oh, I covered it. I'm just using, trying to use my paper trimmer to cut this out, and I have a better one on the other side, so I'm gonna do that one. Um, I'm just going to, I'm off camera, I'm sorry. Um, but I'm just cutting this, let it snow out. I guess I can come up here better. Um, so I'm just trying to make my, border approximately the same all the way around. Oh, it moved. I can't do it that way. <laughs> well, that's why you use the Stamparatus. It helps you with that. I didn't think about that this might not end up square with based on however I'm cutting this. I might be doing more cutting. All right. I didn't plan this part. Oh, that's too small that way. All right. 
So I'm going to take off one more little, one more little line. Oh, well, it's just going to not be completely square. <clears throat> the only reason this matters is because I am putting it on a square. So it's going to go, oh, it looks pretty good. Okay. So this is Tahitian Tide. Where, 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 where? My adhesive. I've, oh, there it is. Tahitian Tide. So I'm going to attach this to, so this Tahitian Tide is the one that was that third square that I talked about that, from Stylish Shapes. And I'm going to put this on this card base. First of all, I'm going to put this inside. <clears throat> this is Starry Sky. Starry, whoops, that's a smoky slate. I need my starry sky. Well, I, di I didn't want two stitched dies, so I didn't use the die. Okay, so I'm going to use the snowflake from Frosted Flurry. I'm almost done because um, I want some background snowflakes on here. Good enough, that's all I need. And then I'm going to put one here, here, here. Did you see how I did that? <clears throat> I inked it once, stamped it three times inside here. Okay, so now that's, Jamie, that's part of why I um, showed the Stamparatus today because I was realizing I haven't, shown it in a while. Okay, so this is some snowflake vellum that we have. Um, and here's the swatch book that I have for it. So some of it is silver. So there's silver snowflakes, silver like flurries, I guess I'll say. Are they different? I'm not sure if the two sheets are different. Or not. I think they are. And then here's white flocking, excuse me. Here's more white flocking, more white flocking. So it's either silver or white. I know that's kind of hard, just white on white, but um, it's really pretty. Okay, so with vellum, you can kind of see the adhesive behind it. So what I've been doing um, to avoid that is using liquid glue and putting it right behind wherever the snowflakes themselves are. Um, so it can, it's coming out too fast. Um, so it's sort of a, um, it's sort of a shiny paper that needs a little bit extra adhesive in my opinion. Um, but you don't want too much, and you don't want it really to show around the snowflake. So, so I'm gonna put this down here. Somebody was asking last night, if, or said last night, that it would look good on dark cardstock, and yes, it does. So here's this. And then we're gonna put the let it snow, let it snow, let it snow on here. Oh, I lost my dimensionals. There they are. <clears throat> the vellum is gorgeous. So you get six sheets total um, of that vellum in the package. All right, I decided I'm not gonna use that. I was originally gonna use that 
marquee type trapezoid whatever thing. And I decided I want normal because I want more in a different way. Um, where did my take a pick go? Okay, so I just want them to be small, but I'm gonna grab rhinestones. There. Where's my card? All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna bring you up. So, first thing is, I'm, oh, where's my, I need to tip you guys because I need to see, sorry. So I'm doing my magic again on the upside down, put you backwards again. You're tipped and now I got to lift you. I have to untighten it so I can. I guess the word would be loosen, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> okay, so here's the last one that I made with the vellum. And with, remember, the, oh, I forgot to do, okay, I'm going to see if I can get this off. Just a sec. I don't think I can get it off. I was going to, I'm going to try it while it's on the thing. I hope it works. It didn't work as well as I wanted to, so I might have to redo it. I wanted to put a snowflake on here, so I'm going to have to fix this. So here's my last one that I did. Thank you, ladies. And the second one that I did. And my milk carton. <laughs> it's my favorite. I love it. I love the chocolate anyway, you know. Okay. <clears throat> oh, you think it looks okay with the snowflake sort of... I don't know what it was. It was, um, oops, my computer went away. It's just not all there. I don't know. I'm going to fix it. Um, all right. So you can, you have till next, well, let's start sooner than later. You have through Friday to take advantage of the seasonal sale that's going on. It's Stampin' Ups. Yeah, the olive branch is kind of cool, right? I, I, it caught my eye when we got the catalog. Um, it's Stampin' Ups early version of Black Friday. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> so through Friday, um, there's deals in, it's just in the full catalog. Um, by next Saturday, by the way, next Saturday, the 26th, it's the Saturday after Thanksgiving. I'm going to be at the craft show at the Wyoming High School. Um, so I will be there again. And that day also happens to be um, the last day to <clears throat> register for my December Dazzling Card Club. <laughs> An accessory after the fact, Jamie. <laughs> I'm always looking for ways to package those. <laughs> I love them. Um, um, Dazzling Card Club will be December 6th and December 9th. December 6th is three different times available. When you register, you choose the time that you want to come to. We're going to be using the um, Leaves of Holly bundle. And so remember with Card Club, you get $20 of product included with, um, with your registration, with your class. 
Um, and we make eight cards for two each of four different designs. And so the last day to register for that is next Saturday. Um, there are other things going on that I just don't remember about right now. <laughs> so I'm done for today after whew, I had a long one today with my gapping and my three projects. So um, I will see you again next Wednesday at 1030 a.m. And it's the day before Thanksgiving. Um, but I, I should still be here. Shouldn't be a problem. So thanks for joining me today. Remember to share and tell me that you shared so I can enter you into my drawing for chocolate <laughs> or cards too, either one. Thanks so much. Have a great day and I'll see you next week. Bye.